Hi, I'm Dawn Blattel. I'm an art educator from Ohio, and I've developed a way to do glaze pour paintings and pouring onto functional objects as well. This is our advanced techniques video. Um, in the basic one that you can also find shows you how to do a glaze pour. This I'm gonna show you how to do on unusual shapes and different materials and some of the tricks of the trade I've created. Um, first off, if you have an unusual shape, um, this is the splash bowl that Mako um, has in their molds. Um, definitely recommend putting a layer of glaze down first, so in case you accidentally miss a spot, it's already got a color there for you. I also, instead of trying to use my like small plastic cup, which by the way, a trick is if you just squeeze it, it makes a little pour spout for you and makes it way easier. You can totally use this to get around your sculptures I happen to prefer one that's made out of silicone and it just lets me get bendier and around things easier. Um, but I was able to glaze pour on both of these woo, unusual shapes. Um, and I can also do things like glaze pour on things I've made on a potter's wheel. We've tested what to do on stoneware and what different cones we can use. This one was actually fired at cone five using a variety of the stroke and coat blues and whites. Um, some of the colors do burn out, but it's pretty unique looking all on its own. Um, you can absolutely just do hand built things. It doesn't need to be done on a potter's wheel or out of a mold. I've also figured out that you can choose to make a stencil of your own liking. So I borrowed Mako's logo and I um, cut off the images. I then pre-glazed my 8x10 canvas with white. I let it dry. I placed my stencil down and I was able to take my little silicone cups and pour into each of the sections keeping my colors separate as I made the logo. And then once it's mostly dry, I just peeled the vinyl off. Um, we have a couple other ways that we can think about altering the surface. One is to use um, sculpting medium. It's something new to me. I've only learned about it since I've learned about glaze pouring. Um, but it will build up the surface of your canvas and you can create textures that would change how the glaze pours across the surface. So to start, I actually pre-prepped this one. I simply taped off a design and built up the surface with sculpting medium so that it had this neat texture. It's really just a sponge um, and then let it dry and I'm going to have a chance to go ahead and pour over it. and. Here's its big brother that happens to be the same exact method, just on the 8x10 canvas. And if I tilt it a little bit, hopefully you can see the different textures on the edge versus the way it looks on the flat surfaces. And it definitely causes the glaze pour to break in an interesting way. I've also managed to do a wax resist with this. So putting down a layer of a glaze pour first and applying wax and then pouring around it. And so we'll be demoing the uh, sculpting medium and the wax resist pours next. So I'd like to show you a way you can use sculpting medium as a textural element to your projects. This is a specialty glaze. Um, you can use it by building it up on the surface. You can use it with stencils. I totally watched the Mako video after I learned about the material to figure out all the things I could do with it. And it really does change the way the glaze breaks across the surface of my project. Um, I've already pre-prepared a canvas with some sculpting medium, but just so you have an idea how I did it, I simply taped off an area and then I use the sculpting medium and a brush to layer it up and a sponge to dab an interesting texture and let it dry before I add my glazing. So um, if you watch the basic video with me, you know I have a trick of the tape wall around the edge. If you're not familiar, here is something that made a big difference and saves me a lot of waste in the process. Um, you might need a little stand to hold your project up for this. I 
use some type of painter's tape and I'm gonna create a barrier around the edge of the canvas so that the glaze doesn't escape while I'm working. Um, I choose to wrap around a little corner because it makes it easier and around my project and um, make sure you go all the way so you don't have a gap in your wall. Um, if you do a pre-layer of glaze down first, definitely make sure it's dry or your tape won't stick to it. Learn that the hard way. So now that I have my little barrier wall created, um, I definitely find using a mister bottle to be your friend. Um, a spray bottle puts out too big of droplets, so I really do recommend a like finger mister bottle. The porosity of the clay canvas holds on to the glazes, so if you have it misted first, they move better across the surface. Um, you can choose to use um, stroke and coat or foundations for this, but I happen to be a very big fan of the bold colors of stroke and coat. I have prepared these and thinned them by about 15%. That's 15 milliliters to 100 milliliters of glaze with water. Um, it just allows it to move across the canvas smoother. Um, so I guess I should get started on a pour. First suggestion is to go ahead and spray your surface because it will allow your glaze to move easier. I've pre-prepared a cup, though so you don't need a fancy one, a simple um, aha, cup from fruit cups or applesauce totally work for this. I'm going to start by pouring in the middle and getting my glaze moving along the flat surfaces and then I'll address getting glaze on the um, textured areas. So a straight pour is when you're pouring out of your cup and you just pour straight down into the middle and it will start making its own lines and patterns as it hits the surface. Um, I like to be a little more adventurous than that so I'm going to go ahead and travel my color down my X section of my canvas and work to the other one. The longer you stay in one area, the finer the lines you get. Um, so I'm gonna work on traveling all the way to my corners. They're usually the hardest part to get covered. Um, the reason why I'm not covering my textured areas yet is because I really want it to break across the texture in an interesting way which I find happens best if you do them last. So I'm largely, but most everything covered. I'm gonna go ahead and use my mister bottle to re-get things moist and ready to spread. And you can kind of see it's already ready to walk across the flat surface. But I'm gonna put a little bit of an insurance policy on the um, textured triangles also. Um, and my personal, in like trying all of these, I've noticed if I treat the areas different, then they cause different results. And so it makes the textured area show up more if I don't do a straight ring pour in that area. So almost have all of my sculpting medium covered. any last little holes I'm worried about. Okay, now comes the fun of we're going to start tilting our canvas. If you have small little gaps like that, um, they usually disappear in the tilting process, but you can either mister bottle them and they will disappear or have a trusty brush. And if you kind of just dab, everything closes and then you won't have a gap in your pour later. Um, on flat canvases, this is less of a concern, but if you're dealing with like vertical textures around those, I definitely find it helpful to make sure I have all my nooks and crannies like connected with glaze. There's no gaps. So now comes the fun tilt-a-whirl part. Start moving your glaze around the corners. A reminder, I have the tape there as a small barrier so I don't keep losing my glaze off the edge. I don't like waste, not in my studio or in my classroom. So this was a great trick to keep things from dripping off the side while I was trying to get other areas covered. Um, and we have to work our glaze around the surface. I personally really like the word gyroscope and it's one of the few times you get to use it. 
And once you have all of your surface covered, we're gonna have a chance to take off the walls and let the glaze drip over the edges. Um, the more you move it, the more mixed up your colors are going to become. Um, the less you alter it, the more defined some of your line quality will be. Um, I personally really, really like using little silicone cups, um, especially for when I'm going to do my wall. I can take my pre-made cup, I can prep some in here to start, so that if I need to do touch-up on the walls, it's already ready for me. Um, so Mr. Bottle in hand, brush ready to go. Oh, another trick, I really do recommend like spraying the sides under the tape. Um, the glaze will wanna flow over the top edge pretty easy and then drag as it goes lower. So that stops that from being a problem. All right, time to find where my tape edge is. And as I start to peel my tape, you'll notice that the bead of glaze is kind of around the edge. I can get my brush and my mister, and I kind of get that first little bit just wet. So it has a nice surface to flow across as I keep working all the way around. So peel my tape for the next side, mist along the edge, use my brush to get it all wet. And then as I tilt, it begins to travel across that surface. And here's where you can start to see it breaks across the textured area in a different way. And so we're gonna keep traveling. Oh no, my tape is stuck to my stand. Um, and around we go. Spraying. Oh, and sometimes I borrow the little drips from the bottom and use those also in getting my sides covered and tilt down that side. Oh, and this is the part that is, I don't know, it's magic in my opinion. It's where I know what the design I started with and it's going to start doing interesting things across the texture that I could have never created on my own on a flat surface. And I make sure I get all the excess off and around. And then the neat thing to watch is as it dries, this will actually, the water will evaporate out of the glaze and the texture will show up from the sculpting medium, leaving an, a product where you can see it in the bigger example showing the design. So I have one more trick to show before we wrap up this glaze pour video. I actually used wax resist as part of the process. I prepared my canvas with a pour using all the fabulous rainbow colors provided by Stroke & Coat. I really like the vibrancy that they provide. Um, I let that dry and then I used the wax resist. And then here comes an honest part. I was like, oh, let's make it real good and make sure it works. And I put it on so thickly that I did manage to, for it to pull off in my hot car on the way here. So there's a trick, like putting on enough is right. Putting on too much does not do you any good. Um, but we're still gonna show you the glaze pour around it because it obviously produces a fantastic result. So I've prepared a cup with black and white. Doesn't have to be a divided cup. You can just use a condiment cup as well. And I learned, well, it's normally great to mist the glaze first. If you mist during this step, it will put water bubbles onto your wax and then the glaze will cling onto them and travel on top of your resist, kind of defeating the purpose. Learn the hard way on that one too. So on to our glaze pour. I'm going to start pouring in the center. Um, in comparison to doing like a straight pour where I hold the cup in place, I don't want this to build up too thickly. So I'm gonna move around and as it works its way, it'll fill in all the like channels between the wax resist. So I'm going to start and there goes my, my pour. And I'm just kind of following my channel around and around. Trying not to let it linger in any spot too long. 
Um, and as the glaze spreads out, it will actually bubble up against the resist of the wax, kind of like um, water and oil don't mix when you make dressing. Same pro process happening here, only we're using it to keep our water-based glaze separate and then we'll be able to see the rainbow poke through. And so I travel and fill my areas. Um, also, when you go to tilt your canvas, you'll notice that areas that might not have gotten filled in during this step will get filled in during the tipping. Uh, I really just like all the little marks it makes as it fills in in between. Um, if you're interested, um, Mako also has like demonstrations on how to do like marbling and things. You can absolutely choose to like uh, pull a tool through this pattern and make it mix more or less to your own liking. Also be aware that corners are tricky. So if you have any extra glaze sitting in your cup going around your edges is ideal. So I think I'm about ready to start tipping. I've got most of it covered. Um, I'm still using my tape wall to keep my tape, my extra glaze from escaping. Um, though you will want to be aware tipping too hard will just cause it to run and flow over your wax and that's not what we're going for either. We are really trying to leave areas that get unglazed by the black and white. Um, now that I'm pretty happy with how my coverage is, I'm going to start treating my edges. Um, I am a big fan of these little silicone cups that I didn't wash this one. Oops, my bad. Oh, there we go. Um, I, when I go to start doing my edges, found it difficult to hold my cup, large cup there. So I'm going to prep my silicone cup with a little bit of glaze. Um, and this is where your Mr. Bottle will come back into being handy. Um, I, I like to miss below my tape because it's the most resistant area to getting glaze coverage. Okay, and then the fun part. I get to start pulling off my edges and the glaze will travel around the sides and I will be left with rainbow peeking through black and white on my wax resist. It has been my pleasure sharing these advanced techniques of glaze pours with you. I'm still learning and I hope you invent fantastic ways to use this also. I plan to use it in my personal studio as well as my classroom. And I like that I get to teach it to people I would never have a chance to meet otherwise. And remember, always make it Mako. Don Blatel. <laughs>